Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. Today we're talking about the Bosch and more specifically the 454B A2L Bosch equipment. And when you do a Bosch cased A coil, it's going to have the sensor for that refrigerant inside mounted from the factory and a wire coming out of the cabinet. I'm going to have a picture here for you in a minute. When you use their cased coil, that sensor has to basically communicate or talk with the piece of equipment you put it on. So let's go through when you're going to want it, what we're going to call it. They call it a control board. I'm going to call it an interface board because it goes between the piece of equipment and the A-coil. So to me, it makes more sense to be an interface. It lets those two pieces communicate. When are you going to need this control board? And this is what it looks like, by the way. And we're going to dive in inside in just a minute. But that's what it looks like. Yes, it's a little scary looking. Don't worry. We got your back. We got you covered. This box, this interface board, you're going to need it when you put a new 454 A2L Bosch heat pump with an older Bosch furnace. That could happen a lot. If you put their case coil and a Bosch heat pump with any other brand of furnace, and again, that could happen a lot because it's a great piece of equipment, and you might not need to replace the furnace every single time you want to put a heat pump or a really, really good AC on that furnace. Anytime you use the Bosch cased coil with any other piece of equipment, essentially, they have a really, really nice cased coil. The sensor comes built in. So when you use that with any other A2L type refrigerant, it's going to have to be 454. The sensor's built in. You're going to need this box to communicate between the sensor and the furnace. So this box, it's really set up nice. And thanks again to Bosch for doing such detailed stickers. I mean, it really means a lot when you can lose the instruction manual and still figure it all out. So the top, these five wires say two condenser. Now you might say, why is there five? Because again, you can have a two-stage AC, you could have heat pump, you could have whatever. This says to the thermostat. So these are the wires, and there's a lot of wires here. Again, you could have two stage, you could have heat pump, maybe it's a standard AC and that's all you're doing it as. You'll just simply cap off the wires you don't use, always cap off the wires you don't use. And then the bottom group of wires, say to the furnace. Pretty simple. It's marked here and then every single set of wires has a little color code of what it goes to and it all makes sense. Thank God for that. So, Mounting this box. Now, Bosch gives you a little sticker on where to mount this on the A-coil. This is the only thing, personally, I don't think I would mount this on the A-coil and have a bunch of wire nuts dangling off in midair on my install. I think I would mount this probably down near the furnace, drill a hole, bring these wires into the furnace cabinet so all my wire nuts, all my mess is kind of concealed and my job looks really, really good. So, Again, you'll only need this older Bosch, other brands, or if you put their coil on something else. You don't need this, so the sensory is factory wired in the new coils. With the new Bosch furnace, there's a spot on that control board for the sensor to plug right into the control board, so you won't need this if you install a matched pair. The air handlers and the mini splits, all this stuff is built in, wired in, super easy. So we don't have to go too deep on that. Now let's get inside. And again, let me open this real quick. Bosch does a great job with their stickers. I wish everybody else did. So this is what the inside looks like. And you can see there, and I'll have better pictures. There's a nice spot to slip the sensor lead. There's a spot to plug in the sensor. It's a five pin sensor. There's an LED light on here. And then inside the door, true Bosch fashion, and again, we'll have a picture of this up close, it's got the fault codes, so we can run through them. The little LED light that's on, if it's on, steady, it's normal operation. If it's off, there's no power. One flash, a communication error, that could be that it's either not communicating to the furnace or it's not communicating to the sensor, just make sure it's fully plugged in. Two flash means you have a refrigerant leak, it's doing its job, it interrupted the call for AC, cycled the fan on because there's a leak detected inside that plenum. 
A three flash would be a sensor error. Again, it could just be a faulty sensor. It could be a faulty wire between the sensor and, a, and the, the uh, interface board. It could just be a loose connection. And a four flash means the sensor is at its end of its service life. Now, again, that might, it, don't get nervous. Most manufacturers are telling me that the, the service life of the sensor without calibration is 15 years. So we're good there. So those are the only four codes that this thing could or will flash. And honestly, it looks, it looks a lot more complicated than it is. Honestly, if you just look at this, it looks a little bit scary. But once you realize this just goes directly to the outdoor unit, that's the only place the outdoor unit lands. This one goes to the thermostat. And this one goes to the furnace. So it's literally an interface board between all that equipment going to your furnace. So everything goes in and out of here. This goes to your, your furnace. It's pretty simple. And again, you'll use this if you put a, a Bosch with a Lennox, a Bosch with a carrier, a Bosch with a train, a Bosch with whatever brand. You're going to want that sensor to talk with that brand furnace. And this is the box that gets you there. Let's dig a little deeper and show you the wiring diagram. Now, you can see the box. It's, I don't know, maybe five inches by eight inches. It's not very big. It's got a bunch of leads coming out of it. We're going to go through that right now. First, I wanted to show you what the coil looks like. So the picture you're looking at now shows the cased coil with the wire coming out of it and what it, how it's mounted inside the Bosch cased coil. So that's all done for you. So when we get to this part, it's pretty easy. This lead is at least five feet long. You got plenty of length there. So wherever you mount the interface board, and I'm making that the interface board right there, you're going to bring your sensor in, plug it into your interface board. Simple. Mount the interface board on the coil where they show you on the furnace, wherever you want to do it. Pretty simple. And then it's labeled. It's labeled very, very well. Three little arrows to three groups of wires. To furnace, you have W1, W2, because again, they don't know if you're using a two-stage stat, one-stage stat timed. Either way you want to go, again, whatever wire you don't cap off. So my typical install, even though I, I love the Bosch two-stage, I would choose to have the Bosch furnace time it out to the 10-minute delay between first and second stage. So I would cap off W2 and just use W1. Again, with the Bosch heat pump, I'm not going to do Y1, Y2. I'm only going to do Y because all it does is turn on the condenser unit and I'm good there. So again, I would just do one G R C. So my thermostats uh, powered. So that's all the stuff that goes to the furnace. So it's pretty simple. There is no intermingling of the wires. One group of wires goes to the furnace. Forgive my drawing. One group of wires and they're separate goes to the thermostat. Again, the thermostat, you're going to use R. You're going to use common if you've got a Wi-Fi thermostat. You're going to choose whether you've got a Y1, Y2 thermostat. Again, the Bosch will move along with you. So whether you want the two-stage and the Bosch will modulate and follow behind or not, that's up to you. Green, you're going to need that. Blue or your reversing valve, again, on Bosch, that's on heat. You're going to need that. A lot of furnaces you notice that there's no B wire going to the furnace. Most furnaces don't have a B terminal. So you just wire nut the B from the thermostat and the B going outside, just wire nut those together. W1, W2, again, whether you want the two-stage functionality on whatever piece of equipment you put it on or not. Dehumidify, again, whatever your piece of equipment you've got or not, that's up to you. Again, this box, is for when you're putting the Bosch heat pump with either an older Bosch furnace or anybody else's furnace. So they kind of set you up because they don't know exactly what you're going to have. So all you got to do is make sure you wire nut off, cap off, whatever you're not going to use. And then go into the outdoor unit. Again, they don't know what you're doing here. It's a generic box. So you got Y1, Y2 again with the Bosch. Not going to matter. It's only a Y call. So whatever you hook up here, just make sure you carry it through. The W, you'll need that because that'll send power back to the furnace for defrost. 
the B reversing valve, and the common for your Y, I mean, and your reversing valve. So that's it. I mean, so in a nutshell, if I was going to do this, and let's say I was putting a Bosch heat pump on just a single stage furnace, I'm not going to need W2, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm not going to need two Ys, so I'm just going to go to Y, so W1 and Y. And I keep the G, R, and C because I'm going to want a Wi-Fi thermostat. To the thermostat, I'm going to need my R, my common for Wi-Fi. Again, Y2, Y, I'm, I'm going just a single stage, so I'm just going to have Y, G, my reversing valve, and need that. I'm going to need something for heat, W, and I'm not going to do the dehumidify. So in a simple situation, you're just going to have standard stuff to your furnace, W, Y, G, R, C, basic, to the thermostat, R, C, Y, G, your reversing valve, and your heat, and then to the outdoor unit, again, you're putting in a Bosch. You don't need, it's just going to be a Y, so you're going to want Y for your AC, C to power your AC, B for the reversing valve, and W to send the signal back to the furnace to turn on heat while you're in defrost. So if you're doing a standard basic install, that's all you need. Cap off all the other options, but just know that they put the forethought in to make it so you have connections for whatever you're going to put this with, you're covered. And that's it on the control panel, the interface board, the control board, whatever you want to call it, for the Bosch A2L coil and sensor. All right, to finish things off, I wanted to just show you actual photos of this as a Bosch cased coil. You can see the wire for the sensor comes out a really, really nice grommet that's built in, airtight again. You can see I circled here. That's where the sensor is and the wire is directed up and out. That comes factory installed. The unit with the door on. Again, everything is very tight. Bosch does a great job of making all the openings very, very tight. Great coils. Love them a lot. Now you're looking at the actual interface box and you can see to the outdoor unit, these wires, to the thermostat, these wires, to the gas furnace, these wires. They make it super simple. I love their labeling. Inside the box, now you're not gonna have to do a lot inside here. Basically, there's one soft rubber plug that allows you to get the end from the sensor in. And you're gonna plug the sensor in right here, that white, it's CN26. That's where the sensor goes. There's nothing else to do inside the box other than there is an LED light here so you can count the flashes. Unfortunately, there is no hole in the box. You've got to take off the lid to watch how many flashes it flashes, but that's just the way it is. Again, when the wires to outdoor unit, it tells you why, common, reversing valve. I mean, it gives you all that stuff, makes it super, super simple. Inside the lid of the interface box, you've got the wiring diagram. A lot of this, you don't really need. You know where the sensor plugs in. You know what goes to the thermostat, the outdoor unit, an alarm if you want it, and to the gas furnace. But really, on the inside of here, what you're going to pay attention to is the LED status. Steady on, it's working perfectly fine. Off, there's a power problem. One flash, sensor communication error. It could be a plug. It could be the sensor itself. Two flash, refrigerant leak detected. So that's the one we're probably going to get uh, if there's a leak inside there. A three flash, a sensor error. Again, it could be a bad sensor. It could just be a bad connection or a plug. Check those first. Four flash, sensor over service life. Now, again, that can sound a little ominous. Most of the manufacturers expect their sensors to last 15 years. So we don't have to really worry about that that much. But that's in it in a nutshell. That's what you're going to get with the A2L sensor interface when you use a Bosch cased coil for anything other than a new Bosch furnace or anybody else's furnace, you're gonna need that interface board. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, thank you.